Hey everyone out there, my name is Chris and welcome to the Business Report Show and episode two of our Well Simple Small Cap Challenge. Now before I begin, make sure to hit that subscribe button and if you do end up enjoying the video, make sure you give it a like, every little bit helps. Uh, as a disclaimer, I'm not a financial planner or an investment advisor, so everything I talk about in my videos are just for educational and entertainment purposes only. Make sure to seek a professional before you invest. Okay, we are on to episode two now of our Well Simple Small Cap Challenge. If you haven't watched the first video, I'm going to put the link up here. Make sure you go check it out because it talks about why we're doing this, but essentially what we're trying to do is use the Wealth Simple platform to set up a portfolio of about 10 to 12 stocks at any one time in the small cap range. Now, most of the stocks that I'm going to try to pick are in Canada. I may look at some US stocks depending on what I find during my research. Now, one thing I will highlight out of the first video that I did talk about, small cap stocks are inherently more riskier because a lot of them are not quite proven yet. So what we're trying to do here for this portfolio is just allocate a very small percentage of what we would normally allocate for our overall equities portfolio. So in my situation, uh, I normally allocate 10 to 15% of my stock portfolio to small caps. So out of that percentage, I'll be pulling a little bit out for this specific challenge. So it's something to be aware of because as I said, we're gonna be riding the ups and downs of small cap investing. So I wanna make sure that you know, if the markets do tank for small caps, you're not out your grocery or rent money. Now, just looking at our Well Simple account this morning, uh, looking at the stock that we picked up last week, which was High Tide, the HITI cannabis stock. So today we're up about 10%, 10 to 11%. There's been a bit of pullback from this morning's open. So not too bad. As I mentioned before, small cap stocks are gonna see big swings. We Tomorrow we could see minus 10%, minus 15%. That's just the nature of some of the lower prices and the lower volumes. So we're gonna see big swings. The idea is can we hold on to these in the mid to long term and find a unicorn out there that really brings home the returns for our portfolio. That's really the key here. And also to track some of the news items. A lot of the small cap stocks do trade highly on news releases. So we gotta make sure we keep our eye on it. And that's why I'll keep making these videos. So as a group, we're all up to date on everything that's happening on some of our stock picks. So let's get to the next stock that I've added to my portfolio. Uh, this morning, I picked up 100 shares of HPQ which is a silicon-based resource company listed on the Toronto Stock Exchange Venture. I picked up about 100 shares for a dollar and 35 cents a share. Now, the reason why I'm even looking in this space is for those of you who've been keeping up with my channel, I added GGG not too long ago, G6 Materials. They develop graphene. So again, in that nanoparticle space, they've pivoted their business a little bit and they found a new niche of integrating graphene into air filters and they're finding a good strong customer base on that so we're seeing a good uptake for GGG. So as I've been looking into the material sector one of the things I found was this new research about adding silicon nanoparticles to things like lithium batteries or hydrogen production. So as we all know with lithium batteries there's been an uptake in development and production of it through the growth in the EV market. So I only see that sector getting stronger and anything that can help out those batteries will be great. So with the silicon nanoparticles, the idea is by integrating those into the production of your batteries, you'll be able to charge the batteries faster and there's less degradation on the batteries. So for a company like Tesla, those are things that they wanna look at, meaning battery life is longer, but charging time's a lot faster, which then opens up a whole new marketplace. In terms of energy storage, I like the hydrogen space. I think there's a huge future for use of hydrogen in battery backup. Now with Tesla, they have these huge lithium battery backup storage facilities uh, that they've developed, for example, in Australia to provide backup power for wind turbines and solar. The problem with those is that you need a lot of lithium batteries to scale up the backup battery plant that you need to compensate for times when you're not generating electricity off solar or wind. So one of the things I like about hydrogen is that it provides that scalability that you need for some of this backup. And so for those of you who don't know the technology of electrolysis, essentially what you do is you take hydrogen, you combine it with oxygen and you generate electricity and your byproduct is literally heat and water. It's super clean depending on how the hydrogen is created, uh, but what we're starting to see is mini hydrogen electrolysis machines being developed so that you could essentially have 
hydrogen backup power for your house. The problem with this, however, is that the electrolysis process is not super efficient. So the current commercial technology for this still has a lot of development. Now, looking at a recent press release and white paper that HPQ came out, they are working with a company in Japan that's developing these mini hydrogen backup power units. And preliminary tests show that by adding some of their nano silicon, what they're able to do is actually generate about 40% more efficiency out of these hydrogen backup generators. So this is really good news because it increases profit margins, but it also provides more power in a smaller unit, which is what customers are looking for. So this overall nano silicon market is expected to grow to about 1 billion in 2022. When I take a look at GGG with uh, graphene material, that marketplace is about 3.7 billion in the next couple of years. So I still feel with nano silicon, there's still a lot of room that we're still in the preliminary stages of this current marketplace. So what's the secret sauce for HPQ? It is this uh, pure VAP quartz reduction system. So they get their silicon out of uh, quartz material and that you have to purify it. So for companies like Tesla who want to add silicon to the batteries, for example, it's a very expensive proposition. Getting the silicon and purifying it is not a cheap process. The secret sauce for HPQ is they've got this pure VAP system that's able to extract and purify the silicon in a way that's cost effective on a commercially viable level. This is very important because in order for HPQ to be able to convince manufacturers to add silicon, you have to make it cost effective and you have to make it economically feasible for these manufacturers to add into the product. So it could be a wonderful technology, but if it's too expensive, they're not going to add it. This is why I like about HPQ, they are addressing the cost aspect of adding the silicon. I know just reading up on EVs over the last decade, there is tons of companies out there who have looked at nanoparticles and how they can add a lot more storage power and less degradation of batteries, but it always comes down to cost. And so the fact that HPQ is focusing on the cost component with their patented process to develop and extract the silicon is very positive for this company. So what are the risks when it comes to HPQ? Well, one of the biggest risks is they're not generating any revenue right now. So the current stock price is really trading on uh, the future prospects of this company. So, so I picked up 100 shares at $1.35. There's a lot of value already built into that. So which means over the next few months, we may not see a lot of price momentum here unless other positive news comes out about some of the research and development and some of the projects that they're working on. The other thing is they do have a little bit of debt, but their current assets on their books are higher than their debt, which is positive. However, uh, if they do run into any issues raising capital or if they take on more debt or if they don't convert some of that, that some of that debt to equity, then you do risk going into creditor protection. And there may be some instances where the debt holders just take on and liquidate the assets. So so this is there is a lot of risk to this because they are not generating any revenue right now. Just some timelines to, for us to keep in mind as we're looking at this stock. So after proving up phase one of their pure VAP system to produce these silicon particles, they are moving on to phase two. Uh, phase two delivery to some commercial manufacturers won't happen until Q3 of this year. So we still got a ways to go before the actual nano silicon gets in the hands of some of these manufacturers for them to test. So we still got to wait a few months uh, to be able to see some of these test results. So we got hang tight a little bit here, but if everything does prove out for their pure VAP system, I think the sky's the limit in terms of who they can approach and what they can do to get their product in front of these manufacturers. That's it for the second episode of our Wealth Simple Small Cap Challenge. Don't forget to comment below. I'd like to hear what stocks you'd like to add into the portfolio and let's do this together and let's get some good habits into investing. Now, remember, I'm not an investment advisor or financial planner. Make sure to consult a professional before investing. And remember, always be learning, always be investing. I'll catch you in the next video.